Managing a hotel is no easy feat, especially when it's an older establishment. In 2015, Gordon Ramsay took on the challenge of revamping the Brick Hotel, a property so in need of attention that some might argue it would be easier to just tear it down and start over. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Stick around as we delve into the ups and downs of the Brick Hotel's episode, and we find out what happened to the place after its moment in the reality TV spotlight. At the beginning of this nightmare, we travel to the small community of Newtown, Pennsylvania, home of the historic Brick Hotel, which is over 250 years old. Since 2006, the property has been managed by Verandar Quar, a former child therapist, and her son, CJ. When they bought the hotel, the previous owners assured them that the property would accumulate profits on its own, so there was no need to know much about hotel management. A money printing machine, or so they thought. However, almost 10 years after that, Verandar and CJ are having a lot of trouble maintaining the hotel, and money is running out. Therefore, Verandar had to remove many things and took a dictator role with the staff to make them do exactly what she wants. Verandar maintains control in all sections of the hotel, from the kitchen to the front desk, and rather than helping, all she does is yell and sabotage the work of the staff. For that very reason, the employees don't last long at the Brick Hotel. In just eight months, over 50 employees have left. Some workers only went for one shift and left as soon as they got to know Verandar's true personality. I wish I had two clones of me and Believe me, this place would be happy. No, Verandar, we don't believe you. Finally, Gordon arrives in Newtown, but before checking into the hotel, he decides to meet with some of the former employees. Of course, they all agree that Verandar is the biggest problem at the hotel, pointing her out as the cruel boss who has made many workers cry. Plus, she doesn't even pay them on time. The worst part is that when they tried to demand their paychecks, Verandar called the police on them. Talking to Gordon, the employees all remember the Brick Hotel of the past. That was a beautiful and quite busy place. But now, it's not even a shadow of its former self. Well, time for Ramsay to check it out for himself. The first negative impression comes all too quickly, as Gordon discovers that the front door's glass is smashed. Later, he spots holes in the walls that look like bullets. And considering the hotel is over two centuries old, that's not a wild theory. Among more disturbing discoveries, there's the expired wallpaper that Ramsey doesn't hesitate to rip off. After that, Gordon meets Verandar, who explains that the smashed glass in the door was there from before she bought it, and is part of the essence of the hotel. Hmm. Have you been drinking? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. On the way to his room, Gordon finds a lot of dust in the corners, so the receptionist suggests calling the housekeeper, Talea. Housekeeping? Cool fire brigade! Although there is one truly hilarious thing in this hotel. A small stage of little chairs and a little table. Gordon doesn't miss the opportunity to sit down for tea with Talea, who afterwards takes him to a moldy room. Yes, mold. And mold wasn't even the worst problem. The whole room was filthy, from the curtains to the pillows, as if no one had cleaned since the hotel opened. As for Ramsey's room, it was not much better than the previous one. There was dust everywhere and stains on the ceiling that I prefer not to know its origin. Shortly after, Gordon goes down to the restaurant to meet Tammy, the events coordinator. The events at the hotel are the only thing keeping the Brick Hotel afloat. But I wonder what the event guests are eating because the food at the hotel is pretty bad. The French onion soup was so tasteless that Ramsey poured some salt in his glass of water. And guess what? that had more flavor. Then we have one of the weirdest dishes Gordon has ever tasted, the cauliflower steak, and I wish he hadn't ordered it. After that, he tried a crab sandwich, which was made with canned crab meat that was made in, or I mean, prepared in China. As a result of that, he decided to cancel the rest of his order. Gordon goes straight to the kitchen, where he meets Chef Maceo. A chef, but not the chef. A chef. So Barry, the other chef, is the main one? Well, no. Turns out that they were both hired by Verandar to have the same role. As soon as he hears that, Gordon confronts Verandar about her terrible management with the staff and her habit of threatening them with the police. But she denies those accusations, despite Caitlin, a waitress, admitting that her boss has a close relationship with the local police department. 
Gordon continues to berate Verandar for the terrible state of the hotel, but she just laughs it off. In the evening, Ramsey meets CJ, the IT manager who visits the hotel once a month. CJ then defends himself by explaining that they bought the Brick Hotel because it was an investment opportunity. Though so far, they made an incredible $0 profit. Despite that, CJ is much more liked by the employees, although his mother doesn't allow him to participate enough in the management of the place. In the dinner service, Verandar is in charge of expediting, delivering the dishes, and cooking at the same time. But of course, she's not good at any of those things. Meanwhile, Ramsey continues to inspect the kitchen, and upon moving a stove, discovers a pile of grease on the floor that had probably been building up for years. Verandar claims that the chefs cleaned up recently, but they actually admit that they only took care of their line. To end his inspection on a high note, Ramsey finds a container of black, slimy grease right under the hood, which is a potential fire threat. Gordon already had enough evidence to prove that Verandar has stopped caring about the hotel. As a result of his findings, Ramsey conducts a bacteria test on the air conditioning in his room, and his cleaning kit reads 573 points of contamination. Anything above 30 is considered unhygienic. Gordon continues with a chair, this time with CJ as a witness, who by the way has never stayed at the hotel. That explains a lot. The chair contamination ends up reaching 446, so he tries the shower curtain. You won't believe me, but that one scored 5,860. Please Gordon, next time wear gloves or maybe a hazmat suit. Then Ramsey quickly visits some guests to tell them about his findings and show them that there's mold under their carpet. Faced with this bacterial threat, Gordon has no choice but to... I'm done. In a matter of seconds, all the guests and staff completely evacuate the building. Outside, Ramsey confesses to them that there was no fire, but they were exposed for hours to a lot of bacteria, and the worst part is that Verandar was charging them for that. I want to stop right now and shut this place down. Gordon then decides to have a private talk with Verandar to bring her to her senses. But she claims that in her 10 years at the hotel, she has only received insults and that her employees are irresponsible. Ramsey doesn't believe her, as he has plenty of experience with owners who only make excuses. You're out your depth. The next day, Ramsey arranges a meeting with the staff, but Verandar doesn't show up. When Gordon finds her walking around town, she claims that there's no point in showing up at the hotel, as she always ends up as the bad guy when she's being robbed every day. Well, that's what Verandar believes about every new employee, since she had a bunch of bad encounters with the previous ones. Fortunately, Ramsey convinces her to return to the Brick Hotel, as there will be no renovation without her. Then, everyone starts complaining about Verandar's habit of controlling everything. And of course, she can't take criticism. Instead, Verandar accuses all of her employees of drinking on the job, stealing her money, and overusing their phones. Ramsey stops her from continuing and reminds her that those were her employees of the past. The ones from now on don't deserve to pay the consequences. Thanks to that, Verandar states that she will try to trust her staff. But to make sure that Verandar ends up changing, Gordon speaks privately with her son, who confesses that she's stuck with the leadership model from her native India, but that doesn't work in America with American employees. So CJ promises to help her step aside so the staff can do their job. After the mother-son chat, Ramsey's team pulled off the feat of remodeling the hotel in just one night. They should give those people a bunch of awards. The new brick hotel is extremely elegant and modern, with a black and white color palette that suits it beautifully. The rooms are not far behind. Aside from being cozy, they no longer look like 19th century rooms. Although the best part is they are completely clean, as they always should have been. Proud Veranda is so pleased with the changes that she hugs Gordon. As usual, the remodeling comes with a new menu, focusing on local dishes ideal for the hotel's many events. Finally, it's time for the relaunch. The guests love everything from the new restaurant to the rooms where their health will no longer be at risk. Meanwhile, CJ takes on a managerial role, keeping his mother under control so she doesn't go back to her old habits. At the end of the day, Verandar is so happy that she apologizes to Ramsey for the trouble he gave her, 
and promises that she will just own the place, not control it like a dictator. And things like that, but it's really, really wonderful. Uh, how I love the happy endings. But that was 2015. Let's talk about the present. Was Verandar able to keep her promise? Did the hotel regain its former glory? What happened to the Brick Hotel after the show? Well, you could say that this hotel was successful, as it is still open to this day, with Verandar as a partner, although its old habits have somewhat returned. After Ramsey's visit in mid-2015, Verandar stayed on in her role as owner while her son began to take on more responsibilities as manager. In addition, the turnover rate dropped considerably, achieving a hotel record. When the episode finally aired in June of 2016, Verandar expected an increase in the number of guests, but the consequences of the show were practically nil, at least according to her statements to the Newtown PA Now. In that same interview, she also said, 95% of what was on the show did not happen that way. The person on the show is not the person I am. They filmed here for five days and showed 35 minutes. Although she doesn't have the best memories of the show, she is grateful to Ramsey for his feedback and the hotel remodel. Verandar went ahead with that project, taking out a bank loan to remodel the rooms based upon the concept for the rooms that Ramsey's team put together. CJ and I really have a vision to make the hotel great. I still have faith, was another one of her statements. But days before that interview, the Brick Hotel was temporarily put up for sale for $6 million and listed on SVN Ahia Commercial Real Estate. A few days later, Verandar came out to state that this was a paperwork error and that she was really just looking for an operator to get the hotel and restaurant back on track. However, Chichi Ahia, the CEO of SVN Ahia Commercial Real Estate, assured Newtown PA Now that there was no paperwork error and that Verandar and CJ were interested in selling, or at least leasing the property. In Ahia's words, our firm was approached and subsequently retained by the ownership of the Brick Hotel to market the property for sale and or lease. They executed exclusive listing agreements with our firm to this effect. Obviously, there has been some back and forth with regards to the future plans of the property. In the end, everything indicates that Verandar and CJ regretted the decision a bit and preferred to give the hotel a chance. And it was a decision they kept because today the Brick Hotel is still in operation and looks like this. As for their prices, they are varied, but in general, each night ranges from between $170 and $200. Although the place looks pretty good, the reality is a bit different. The Brick Hotel currently has 3 stars on TripAdvisor and its restaurant has 2.4 stars on Yelp. There are reviews on TripAdvisor from 2016, shortly before the original airing of the episode, complaining about mold in the rooms, lousy wallpaper, and poor water pressure in the showers. Verandar was supposed to have renovated the hotel that year, but currently there are still bad reviews, mostly from customers who were assigned to the wrong rooms. Also, they still have problems with the water and the plumbing system. The situation on Yelp is even worse with reviews criticizing the poor attention the staff gave them, and Verandar often treats customers badly. She is even accused of being a racist. Of course, this could be someone who saw the show and wanted to play a joke, but her opinion seems very real. As for Verandar herself, she usually posts on Instagram, but nothing much related to the hotel, just her personal life. If those recent reviews are true and not internet trolls, then it's a real shame that Verandar hasn't improved her approach to staff and customers. But hey, she's one of the few owners whose business is still going strong. Can that be considered a success? I really don't know.